Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Tibla brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmanah mubarak. Alhamdulillah. Uh, continuing on the introduction to the Sacred Life Project. Uh, I think in substance, we, we, we've covered the sense of what Adam is. What I want to do is, is give you some idea of the, 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 the structure of the, the thought process that's going to go into even, uh, we might even call it the research methodology that will go into, or the foundation for the research methodology that will go into the Sacred Life Project. And it's, it's, it's founded upon Imam Muhammad's statement. And this was a statement that, that uh, he made in a group uh, of us. We were in, in a hotel uh, uh, room situation having a conversation with Imam about so many, so many things. But one of the things that he pointed out was the idea that in Surah Al-Ala, Surah Al-Ala, Surah 87, wherein it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa a'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-Rajim, it says, Sabih ismi rabbika al-Ala, al-ladhi khalaqa fasawwa, wal-ladhi qaddara fahada. Sadaq Allah al-Azim. And it says, with Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, glorify the name of your guardian evolver, the one who creates, completes, measures, and guides. That's the that's the simple, a simple translation that, that goes for it. Well, the conversation that the imam was having with us around that subject was that he said that if you could understand these four dimensions of anything, then you will have the complete knowledge of that thing. If you could understand the four dimensions of anything, then you have the full knowledge of it. So these four dimensions are khalaqa, sawa, qaddara, hada. So first khalaqa. Khalaqa is talking about the form of a thing. The form of a thing. And sawa is talking about the place of a thing within a system. Qaddara is speaking about the potential of a thing to evolve or grow from simple to complex forms. And Hada is understanding a thing in the will, the intention, the plan of God. That is its role in guidance towards the intention and the will and plan of God. So Anything, if you understand those four things about anything, you have the full knowledge of it. I, I, when I first began to you know, reflect on that and continue to uh, just sort of feel that concept out, you know, years ago, uh, khalq, the form, I thought about an ant, you know, so you just imagine an ant. Okay, get the full knowledge of the form of the ant. Okay, the form. All you're talking about is the form, okay? Certainly the external structure, the internal structure, the way that it the way that it looks, literally, that form. Understand that fully. Okay? And naturally you're gonna have all different kinds of ants. Of course, I'm sure there's perhaps hundreds of thousands of uh, types of ants. Well, all of them would have different forms, wouldn't they? But then you would also understand that there's a generic form that relates to uh, the ant as well. But so the, so the point is just understand the form of the ant. Then the next thing to understand about it in your efforts to understand it completely is to understand sawa, sawa. You're seeking to understand its place within a system, place within a system. Now, when you talk about an ant and you talk about a place within a system, well, you know, what system? What system are we talking about? Are we talking about the ecological system? Are you talking about the system of just insects or system of just material creation at large? Of course. Well, as, as someone pursuing that knowledge, then you have to define the boundaries of which system you want to understand that ant in. You want to understand it in, inside of what system? The system of, uh, of uh, social insects? Either way. The point is that you, once you understand that particular creatures, in this case the ant, understand their place within the system, you're progressing in your knowledge about it. 
All right? Then, after grasping that, then you go to seek to understand its qaddara. Qaddara, seeking to understand, you know, qadr is talking about potential, right? It's, all, it's talking about power. All these, all this is inside that term, qaddara. So this qaddara is talking about the potential, according to Imam Muhammad, Rahman is this potential of a thing to move from simple to complex forms. Well, then that's one thing that you also have to understand about the ant. You have to understand how mm. does an ant move from one form to the other? How does an pardon me, not one form to the other, but how does an ant move from simple to complex forms? I mean, there, does the ant start out the way that we meet ants at the picnic table? No. The, the ant starts out as something. So that means you have to understand the ant eggs. You have to understand how they first come into what, what's their simplest stage. That is, before they arrive at their complete and complex and full mature stage, how, where do they begin? And then, how do they progress from one to the other? And when you understand what causes them to progress from one to the other, now you have greater knowledge of the true nature of this thing that you're studying. And we're still talking about an ant in this case. All right, well then after you understand the form of the thing, you understand its place within the system, you understand its, its potential, the, the, the way by which it evolves or grows from simple to complex, well, the last thing to know about it is, to, in order to say that you understand it completely, is to understand, well, where is this thing in the will and the intent and in the plan of God? And what role does it play for guidance? What role does it play for guidance? Because everything has a role to play for guidance. Everything has a place in the intent of the will of God, or it wouldn't, it wouldn't exist. So everything that exists, it, Allah didn't create it for, quote unquote, no purpose. Allah created everything with an aim and a purpose. Well, he had an intention for it. He had a will for it. If, in fact, it exists, well, you have to discover what that is. By the grace of Allah, finding out what is the will of God for whatever it is that you're studying. And in this case, we just use an example of ant. We're going to put it in some concrete basis so we can understand when we take it back to understanding that about the human being, then you understand that that's all we're seeking to do for the human being. Understand the khalaqa sawa qadra hada for Adam. Khalaqa sawa qadra hada for the sacred life. Khalaqa sawa qadra hada for al-insan, the inside man. For that invisible person, for that intellect, for that spirituality. That's what we're seeing. When you understand that, then, then, then you understand everything that you need to understand about yourself and your about human beings. What greater knowledge could there be? So the ant has a place in the will and the plan and the intention of God. But if you really want to say that you understand ants, you better understand that as well. Now, given that we grasp all those things about anything, then we will have mastered full knowledge of that thing. Well, this is what we're doing with the sacred life, the human life. Adam, the inside man, al insan, and Ness. Understanding that about the human being, now we have full knowledge of the sacred life. Now, of course, that not that something that's going to take some time? But alhamdulillah, Imam Muhammad has given us very, very clear outlines for this. And the Sacred Life Project is about continuing that particular process of knowing the true nature and destiny, form and potential of the human being. So alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for your being here. And inshallah, we'll catch you on the next segment. This has been Day 9. God's peace be on you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa mubarak.